the spatial join functionality is an increasingly powerful tool that allows us to use location, proximity, and in this case, containment as a key. We talked about the power and utility of running regular joins or what we call um, non-spatial joins. If we find something interesting off the internet that has a common key, we can basically append our standalone table to our attribute table so that we can map these using a county name, state name, FIPS code, or zip code. We do this a lot with, say, the COVID-19 rates that we download from the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services website, download these as zip codes, format so they're strings, and then join those to existing zip codes. The spatial joint has really evolved lately, and we're going to talk about some more of the evolution with the functionality that we have. Previous iterations of GIS software, especially when I started in GIS, didn't have the spatial join. Ran some intersects so that we can assign points to uh, to uh, enumeration units, and then ran some summarized and, and joined them back. And even now, the version ArcGIS Pro 3.0 is kind of taking that spatial join a little bit further. And so we'll talk about some of the differences that we've worked with in our 2.8 and versus our 3.0. But for now, we're looking at a database here, and we're looking at here of North Carolina tornadoes. And in my classes, I talk about the idea of, I want to find the, the, torn the county that has the most number of tornadoes. Well, I can do some sort of select by location and look for all the tornadoes within, um, say, look for all the tornadoes within, um, well, Wake County, uh, for example, here. And so you can see I've highlighted about 32 tornadoes, but that's going to be really hard. You know, it's going to get really hard really quickly. And since I cover this in my class, we're going to look at another data set here. And so what I've done here is I've gone to the uh, NOAA uh, Severe Climate Prediction Center, and instead of looking at tornadoes, I've downloaded all the hail events between uh, 1950, uh, 1950 and 2021. So all these files that I've downloaded here, I've put these into a CSV file, and then I added them using XY data because I want to talk about some of the caveats in running these spatial joins here. Because in order to create this file here, I downloaded the same data set, extracted these as points, ran a simple clip so I could prepare these data. Now what we're looking at for the hail points is that I'm going to run these hail events, and you can see all the hail events between 1950 and 2021. And basically what I want to do is just count those by North Carolina County because you can see in my table of contents, all I'm working with here is North Carolina County. So I don't necessarily care about anything else, and you can see I can do some data prep for this project, but I'm not going to. If I were to right mouse click, open my attribute table, we can see some of the quantitative data attached to this. So you can see the date, the year, the month, the day. It has the state here, so I can actually calculate these by state. But I have the number of fatalities, the loss, and the injuries attached to these. And some of the things that I want to do is I want to run some summary statistics while I'm counting these up by county so I can find the county in North Carolina that has the most number of fatalities or the most number of injuries. Uh, the documentation that you'll see refers to the amount of loss. It has the starting latitude, starting uh, longitude right here. In the case of tornadoes, it's got an ending latitude and an ending longitude. But refer to the documentation where it talks about some of the different loss statistics because in one version, it's in one previous data set, it was in uh, millions of dollars and other had different categories. So please be aware of those when you start to kind of agglomerate and combine these data. Uh, across multiple time periods. But for this, we're going to add up the total number of injuries and the total number of fatalities. And so essentially kind of what we'd be do would what we'd be doing here is I want to find the the total number of hail events within Wake County. I'm running a simple select by location, so intersect. So my hail events that affects that hail events that intersect with my North Carolina counties. I'm going to click apply and so you can see all the hail events and so you, you can see there's 363 and then while I'm here I can highlight these and I can count up the number of injuries and I can count up the number of fatalities and I can do this 
But first of all, by looking at these, but I can run some statistics on the total number of injuries. So you can see the number of injuries here. It looks like there's zero right here. And so uh, for the entire data set, it's uh, 109, but I can see there's zero and zero right here. Uh, and then obviously I doubt there'll be any fatalities for this particular uh, for, for this particular data set right here. So you can see there's 363. And what I want to do is just group these by county. And so I'm going to clear this once again. I'm going to zoom out. And so I'm going to run the spatial join right here. So I'm going to right click, mouse click on my counties. And the order is going to be important because I'm going to be joining my counties to my uh, to my hail events and I'm going to run joins and I'm going to add a spatial join right here. Now this dialog is a little bit different than your previous incarnations of ArcGIS Pro. So my counties, my join features aren't going to be the tornadoes. In this case we're going to be counting the hail events. In my classes we do an exercise on, uh, on tornadoes so I don't want to give away the answers in this example. I'm going to run an intersect, but in addition, I can calculate the fields here. And typically, those of you who know me, I always hit next and then figure out what I want to do next. But since this is a tutorial, like I said before, I don't care much about some of the other statistics that I want to run. But in particular, I want to, under injuries, instead of first, I'm going to add the sum. And then under fatalities, I'm going to click on sum. And then some of these other categories, such as loss and lat and long, some of these have some utility, some of these don't. And I'll just X out of these here. And so under injuries, I've got some. Under fatalities, I've got some. All the other things I don't necessarily care about or want to add, you know, care about. If I wanted to average up the year or the month, it may have some value. It may not. In some cases, it's useful. But like I said before, we want to add, uh, add up the injuries, add up the fatalities. And so I have target layers, join features. Now, the one major difference between this and previous versions of ArcGIS Pro is that it doesn't give me a place to save a new feature class, because when we run some geoprocessing, uh, geoprocessing applications, we can, like union or intersect or buffer, we're generating brand new feature classes. In this case, we're going to be appending the feature class, the county's feature class, with the results from the hail events. And only the hail events that occur within NC counties, not everything else north and south. And so these 363,000 or however many, however many hail events that we have, we're not going to matter. We're not going to care too much about most of those except for those that are going to intersect. And in this case, you see right here, intersect with the containment proximity or containment criteria specifically and explicitly for NC counties. I can run some other match options, but I'm going to run intersect, and that's probably the one that I'm best at. And so I want to make sure fatalities with the FAT, ING with um, INJ is clicked on some, and I'm going to run these. Okay. Now, the whole goal of this is I'm going to uncheck this here. And now when I right mouse click, open up my attribute table, let's see what I have. Now, once again, I have my county names here. That's understandable. When I, but I, when I go to the right here, I have a join count. And so this has the total number of events right here, and then I have injuries, and then I have fatalities. So if I were to right mouse click and sort descending, you would see Wake County had 363. Okay, coincidence, when I ran that spatial join, I happened to have 363. If I were to right mouse click under in injuries, you would see Robeson County had one injury, Rowan County had one injury, everything else had no injuries. And then under fatalities, I doubt I'm going to have any fatalities right here. But at the same time as adding up the 273 or however many I have, I can add up the injuries. When we look at hurricanes, we look at tornadoes. These INJ and fatalities are going to be a little bit more. I can also map these. And that's the last thing I'll look at here. So I can right mouse click and go to my symbology. And so now by county, I can look at my graduated colors. I went through the trouble of creating 
a brand new join count right here. And you notice here, it's been appended to the NC counties. That's important to remember. There's not a brand new feature class. So in addition to having your POP 2010, POP 2013 median age, all I've done is just added new columns here. And it has a join count, an ING, and an FAT, and those are the only ones that I counted. I got rid of the uh, year, year of the sea loss, Ye get, got rid of the loss because those things aren't necessary. And I just want to look at the total number of injuries, i.e. sum for injuries and fatalities. So now I can count this joint count. And now I can see where the hail events are the most. Instead of using natural breaks, I can use, you know, quantile or whatever I want here. So we can look at the spatial distribution of hail events throughout the state of North Carolina. And like we talk about with normalization, so I can normalize these by area as well. So number uh, of hail events per square mile. And so now it might tease these out a little bit more. So you can see a little bit higher in the West, but you can definitely say Wake County is uh, generally a little bit higher. So we can normalize, uh, normalize these by square mile as well. So a quick summary and a quick update we use the spatial join so that we can use location as a key. The other thing with ArcGIS 3.0, we are not generating, you notice here, I am not generating a brand new feature class. All we're doing is appending the existing feature class. In this case, it was NC counties or whatever enumeration unit that you're gonna be working with. And then in addition, you have a lot of control over the columns that you can bring in. So I specifically specified that for the sum and the fatality, I just wanted to do the sum. I didn't want to add anything else, which is a big improvement on previous versions of uh, the ARC map in the past and the ArcGIS Pro.